Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members and guests. It is August the 22nd, 2022, and this is a regular meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. So tonight we're going to talk about soap bubbles and films, something that has excited all of us since we were little kids. But before we get to that, a couple of brief announcements. Uh, next week, no meeting. September the 5th, Labor Day, no meeting. Our next meeting will be the kickoff meeting for the new club year, which will be September the 12th. And Joe's gonna tell you a little bit about our presenter for that meeting, special guest. Um, it is time for dues and some people realize that without my even telling them. So I already have reports, some folks uh, paid their dues uh, via PayPal. So I'll send this out in a reminder, but just make a mental note that when you have time, uh, either uh, Oh, I'll put it, I'll put the information in, in the email. Send a check to Rich Hudson, our treasurer, and I'll give you his, his address, or just get on PayPal, which is the quickest and easiest way to do and, uh, and pay that way. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's turn it over to uh, Vice President Joe to tell you about upcoming events. Okay. We have, Dennis just mentioned, we have our kickoff meeting on September the, Monday, September the 12th, and we have Frank Smith speaking. Frank Smith uh, spoke last year, and uh, it was to rave reviews. Everybody really liked him a lot, and he has a series of uh, topics, and, and he's going to talk about, uh, this time, uh, people photography. And, and Frank will be uh, talking about the tips and tricks that he uses to get into meaningful engagement so that your, your shots are not snapshots, but they represent the warmth and the environment that the person is in. So he's gonna present that on Monday evening, September the 12th. And then as a follow on to that, on the September the 24th, we're gonna practice what Frank said. So we're gonna be going, and you'll see details of this. We're gonna to go to New Cumberland, they have an apple festival. And Karen Cummings will be there. She is a preeminent uh, street photographer, and not just in our area, but around the country. She wins many, many awards. And she's going to be with us, and we're going to be practicing the street photography techniques that um, Frank has given us. And we're going to have lanyards that we'll have around our neck and have a little West Shore Photography Club identifier. It's our business card. And so when you meet and to try and capture some images, you'll have some sense of uh, credibility with the folks you're talking with. We then have on coming before that uh, real soon on um, Wednesday, August 31st, Mary Fox is going to be leading us over to the Hashcombs uh, Gardens and Greenhouses. And uh, Mary, you want to give everybody a little bit of brief uh, overview of that? Um, Ashcom's great. I mean, there's the indoor, there's outdoor, there's a children's area, there's a place where they have like trucks buried in the dirt. Um, they have all kinds of things there, um, food and um, things to buy, you know, but you won't run out of things to, to do there. At least I don't think so. Yeah, so bugs. They, they yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, bugs and flowers. Yeah, so we can we can practice bugs and flowers then. Okay, great. Um, thanks, Mary. Uh, we have a, a special event coming on September the 10th. It's a flower photography workshop. And Elaine Schuck, who is uh, her and her husband have arranged for some tables, three tables, big ones over at Bowling Springs. And we'll have the flowers there. And Elaine will be conducting and coaching us to do flower photography. So this is one of those deals where you, you will uh, learn by doing as opposed to seeing uh, through a, uh, a, a Zoom meeting. So this is be a lot of fun. It'll be on uh, September the 10th. And then on the September the 21st, we're going to do the Capitol um, uh, waterfalls in the back of the capitals. This is in the evening. It's around, so I don't know, 6.15 or 6.20, based upon what the um, uh, blue one blue hour will be. I forget the actual time, but you'll get a notice on that. And that's a real popular thing to do, too. So if you did it last year, we had like 25 people or somewhere. It was a lot. And we may get the same number this year because people may want to practice and, and improve on what they did last year. So we have other things coming up, but we're not going to get into that now. Those are the highlights for the next coming weeks that we have. So that's it. Very good. Hey, Thank Joe, you, Joe, I have one comment. 
Yes. Uh, also on September 24th, 25th, uh, there's the uh, uh, Sunflower Festival at Meadowbrook Gourds. Right. Yep. And, that, and that'll be a real nice event. We're planning on going there right after that. We weren't planning on going during the festival because there'll be a gazillion people in the fields, you know, tromping around and it might get in the way of our photography. So that we talked with them over there and that's what they suggested that we come like a week later. And uh, that's what we're planning on doing. So thanks for, for, thanks for bringing that up, Rod. Okay, thanks, Rod. Thanks, Joe. Let me uh, share my screen at this point. And while I'm doing that, I'd like to uh, offer a special shout out to Cam Miller and the members of the Frederick Camera Click who are joining him this evening. So welcome, guys. Let me move things around. I've got two monitors, so things jump around a little bit when I do this. OK, uh, as most of you know, especially if you follow me on Facebook, uh, I got into macro big time. And one of the things I started with uh, was photographing soap bubbles and soap films. And if you're like me, you've been fascinated since you were a kid with soap bubbles. Uh, I was at the beach last weekend in Delaware, and there was a guy there with one of these contraptions with the big wand. And he was making these huge you know, soap bubbles that went in the wind, and the kids and the, and the adults were just loving. It was great. Uh, my interest in soap bubbles and films took a little more of a technical turn during my days of teaching physics. And I got into a, a little bit more with the students about the, the, how it works technically. Uh, we're not going to do much of that tonight, just a little bit of an explanation about where the collars come from. But I want to show you uh, or explain to you a good way to um, get a mixture that you can use and then a simple way to uh, light them and photograph them. And then if you have more, you know, more sophisticated, sophist, pardon me, sophisticated equipment like a softbox, uh, you can use some of the techniques that, that I was using. But we're going to keep it, keep it simple, show you a lot of examples. Uh, like these. Uh, it is fascinating, uh, just like I found out with the insects that I've been photographing, when you get up close and personal, there's a lot of detail involved in, in these soap bubbles. They can be very complex uh, uh, geometrically. The shapes and, and the designs, the patterns and the colors are, are just incredible. It's just a matter of looking closely and then uh, figuring out how to photograph them appropriately. Get some very interesting things like that. We'll show you how to do this. And uh, there are a lot of options. You can be very creative with it. You can start out with the basic soap bubble, and then you can do things like add food coloring or vegetable oil. I even tried uh, motor oil uh, just to see what would happen. So you can add anything to the solution and find out how or see how that affects the pattern and photograph that. Here's a bubble. Bubbles are a little challenging to work with. So we're going to explain you know, how to get some photographs of bubbles. But you'll find that films are actually much easier. Okay? And, and the neat thing is that the patterns constantly change you know, until the bubble breaks. But you can just photograph and photograph and photograph. And the, these, the liquid swirls and the colors change and the patterns change. and uh, I haven't gotten into video, but I've watched a couple of YouTube videos about you know uh, doing soap films and bubbles, and that's fascinating. To, to but I've only taken still images. I haven't done the videos. So stuff like this. Uh, let me just uh, mute someone here who's making some interesting noises. One, two. There we go. Uh, patterns like this, a and I don't completely understand how the patterns develop. I'll tell you, tell you a little bit about the basic physics behind science behind it, uh, patterns or the colors in general, but the intricate detailed patterns that, that occur are, are just fascinating. Okay, just a wee little bit about the science of it. Um, the bubble is formed uh, by a principle called surface tension. And the, the surface tension develops between like molecules. And that's what holds the bubble together and gives it its shape. The colors come from a phenomena called thin film interference. So as you can see from the diagram, this would be your light source, the light coming from a window or a bulb or whatever. And this is supposed to be your, your soap 
film, as thin as it is, it actually, of course, has two surfaces and, and a little bit of, of soap solution between them. The light that comes in actually bounces, some of it bounces off of the first fir surface, it reflects. Some of it penetrates the soap film, okay, and continues through, but some of it also reflects off the back surface of the bubble and comes out. So what results now are two waves that are coming out and there's a little bit of a difference that separates them. And as you know, like waves in a pond have troughs and, and crests, and those waves can interfere with one another to create a bigger wave or cancel out altogether. Well, that's what happens with the light waves too. Uh, they, because this film is so thin, you know, wavelengths of light are very, very small, but so is the, the thickness of the film. So the soap film gets so thin that this very, very small distance creates waves that are what they call out of phase, which means they either reinforce one another or they, they, uh, it, or they cancel one another out. And that's what results in, in the colors that you get. So the thing to remember is the colors correspond to the thickness of the soap film. And if you see colors changing, it's because the thickness of the film is changing. So what typically happens is gravity draws the soap solution down over the bubble. The bubble will turn white. It loses its collar right before it breaks. Okay, so I watched the soap solution here. I watched this bubble, and it was very colorful all around, including at the top. And then the colors were changing, and the colors, so the bands of colors started shifting and moving downward because gravity was pulling the soap solution down, making the top of the bubble thinner than the sides. And the top becomes so thin that the interference, that, that, that those two light waves that are coming, bouncing off the first surface and the second surface, you know, create a white, and then it you know, is so thin that, that it just breaks. So that's one thing to look for when you're, you're uh, working with your soap bubbles. The surface tension concept is very interesting, and you can, I demonstrated it with this plastic straw. In fact, here's the, here's the straw. And I had a soap bubble and I, I simply pushed the straw into the bubble. The bubble did not break. The surface tension was so great that it just engulfed okay, the straw. And then you can do things with the straw, like add other ingredients, add the food coloring or the vegetable oil or whatever you, know, you want to, uh, to change the pattern and the colors, stuff like this. I mean, fascinating. My wife wants me to make t-shirts. We'll go on, we're going on a, a, a cruise again uh, next March called Flower Power Cruise. It's uh, music from the 60s. So we got tie-dyed shirts when we were there last time. And this time we're going to have uh, my soap film t-shirts to, to wear. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how do you make the solution? It's really very simple. Uh, and here, there are lots of different formulas and you can try your own, but this worked fairly well for me. What I did, uh, I, I got on YouTube and watched a whole bunch of videos and, and guys would, uh, or guys or gals would talk about how they make their soap solutions. But you can, tablespoons work well, two parts of water, one part dishwashing liquid. I use Dawn, but quite frankly, I don't think it matters a whole lot. You could use palm olive if you want to. All right. But the trick is they don't last nearly long enough to photograph unless you add an ingredient to them. You can very easily buy vegetable glycerin on Amazon, a couple bucks a bottle. Okay. And you add a little bit of that. So I'm, I'm, my formula is, and it's enough to work with a little bit, is two to one to a half. So a half a tablespoon of vegetable glycerin. Now, it's, it's organic, it's not harmful. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, if you don't wanna buy glycerin, you can very simply add sugar or you could try honey. Some people I've, I've watched the videos, you know, used honey. But in any case, you mix the solution together and let it sit for a while. If you try using it right away, 
you're going to find that your bubbles don't last very long. You'll get frustrated. You know, you'll, you'll blow a bubble when you go to photograph it, boom, it pops. Okay. But if you leave it sit for at least 20 minutes, half hour, and so I found even better overnight for some reason, then when you come back the next, you start the next day, you know, your bubbles are going to last longer. I mean, they may, might last, you know, two, three, five, 10 minutes. Yeah, give you plenty of time, you know, to photograph. Well, how do you photograph it? Well, first you need a camera and you don't have to be very specific. This is not, doesn't have to be detailed. You can use almost any camera. You could use a, a, a cell phone camera, right? But it helps, especially if you're doing bubbles, if you can get up close and do like close to macro work or at least close up photography. So if you, if you don't have a close up lens, okay, you could get a diopter, one that looks like a, a filter you put on the front, but just a magnifying glass, okay? Or you could try extension tubes if you have those, uh, or just a telephoto lens or a telephoto lens with extension tubes. So you don't need to get, like macro we typically say is life size, one to one. The image on the, the sensor would be the same size as the actual image. You don't need to, to get that detail, that close. Okay, Just almost any lens will work especially if you can get close up. I'm going to mention minimum focusing distance because you, know, you need to be aware of that with your camera and your lens. Every lens has what they call minimum focusing distance. I mean, you get closer and closer and closer to your soap bubble. And then if you get too close, it won't focus. Okay, you're closer than the minimum focusing distance. So test your lens on any subject. Just be aware of about how close you can get, because if you get too close, then it won't be sharp. And you want your image to be sharp. Tripod, I wouldn't recommend. They, they kind of get in the way. Okay, so don't worry about a tripod. Camera settings, again, there's a lot of leeway here. You just want a proper exposure to get the colors. Okay, so the but the shutter speed, you, you want to be kind of short because you're close to your subject and any camera move, especially your hand holding the camera, you might get camera shake, you know, or those patterns and the bubbles are going to be moving. So you want to stop action there. So my recommendation would, would be two times the focal length of your lens. Yeah, one over two times the focal length. So if you're using a, a 50 millimeter lens, then I would say at least as short as one one hundredth of a second. And of course, if you use a longer lens, let's say you're doing using a telephoto and you have it at 200 millimeters, well, yes, that magnifies your image, but it also magnifies any camera shake that you might have, okay? So if you're using a 200 millimeter lens, then I would recommend one four hundredth of a second. Well, that's a very short, that was a pretty short shutter speed so how are you going to leave in enough light to get a proper image? Well, you're going to have to, you know, up that ISO most likely. Okay, you don't want to open the aperture too much because then your depth of field is sacrificed. Okay, so I'd recommend, you know, f/8 if you're using a flash, and we'll get, in, get into maybe if you have a, a softbox, then you can go up to f/32. And I know we, Joe and I've told you before, like if you're doing landscape shots and you shoot at F32, you're probably going to get a soft image because of diffraction. Well, you know what? When I'm doing this macro work, I'm not finding diffraction to be as much of a problem. I've been shooting with flash at F32 because of my macro lens. I use a Canon 100 millimeter macro lens and it goes as small as F32. But with the flash, that's not a problem because the flash will generate enough light, even though that opening's so small. Okay, and I I still tend to get pretty sharp images. I, I haven't seen diffraction as a problem, and especially with this type of work, if you're doing soap bubbles and soap films, I don't think you need to worry about the diffraction. Okay, you're going to be okay. So a lot of leeway in the settings. Just don't underexpose the image. Okay, try to get a proper exposure. And if you have to set that ISO up to like 3,200, you know, go with it if you have to. But if you use flash, you're not going to have to go that high. Raw or JPEG, doesn't matter. 
you know, if you shoot raw, then you have a little more leeway in, in post-processing with stuff you can do. But as long as you get a decent exposure, yeah, that's not a problem anyway. Okay. Burst mode, yeah, you can use it, but it's not necessary. You can just shoot them one at a time if you want. And uh, I, I have the most success with my macro work uh, setting the lens to manual focus. Okay. A lot of people think, well, they always, they always use autofocus. They're not used to using manual focus. Well, try it. Flip that little switch on your lens to MF, manual focus, and then you have two, two possibilities. One is you can set your lens to like its, its closest focusing distance and then just move the camera and your body until the soap bubble is sharp. Okay, or of course, you can turn the focusing ring, just hold yourself steady, turn the focusing ring until it gets sharp. But I would recommend using manual focus, one of those two techniques, rather than uh, autofocus. I don't have as much luck with autofocus. Okay, let me take a brief break. Anybody have any questions at this point? If you do, simply unmute yourself and I'll get into my setup. That's, that's the basic camera and camera settings. Now I'm gonna show you how to light it and get into that. But anybody have a, a question before we proceed? Yeah, Dennis, the light uh, on your camera doesn't affect the color of the soap bubbles? The light, what, what light on your camera? Your flash. Oh, I'm not recommending you use on-camera flash. Yeah, well, I'll get into that in a sec. And, and yeah. Dennis, also, will you be talking about, in case you want to, using a, an iPhone, for example, you'll be getting to that as well? Well, not specifically, but we can address that. Uh, yeah, just when I said any camera, yeah, just substitute your cell phone for the camera. Cool, yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah, when I say lighting artificially, uh, I'm going to recommend a window light or a door. Okay. Don't use the, the flash. If you have a flash, don't put it on the hot shoe and use it on the camera. That'll destroy the colors. You won't get, won't get good colors. So either don't use a flash and just use the light coming from a window or a door. Or if you have a soft box, then I'll, I'll show you how to set up the soft box to get good colors. How about, a, how about an LED? Uh, yeah, LED would work depending on, and, and I'll talk about how to position it. As, as long as you can move the position of the flash, uh, yeah. I mean, of, of the LEDs. Yeah, the light source. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. Okay, let's take a look at... Uh... Dennis? Yes. I just, I just wanted to check, what container do you have the bubbles in? Is it like a little small glass container so nothing affects it from the bottom? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that in a sec. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, let's talk about the, the setup. This is if you're not using a flash. Uh, let's just say you're, you're using a, a window or a door. So, and, and I'll have a copy of this that you can download in the email that goes out tomorrow as, as the follow-up. So let me read through this step-by-step step and see if anybody has any questions. Okay, find a door or a window and you don't want the light shining directly through it. Okay, no direct light. Uh, put a, it, it, you don't have to, but if you put a white bed sheet or something over the window, it diffuses the light and gives you a nice, soft, even white light. You don't have to do that, especially if the light's not coming directly in the window, but, but it adds a nice touch to it. Uh, put a small table there that you're going to put the, uh, the, the soap bubble stuff on. And uh, I'd say put a protective cloth down because you know what soap bubbles do. They break and when they break, they go <laughs> and the soap solution <laughs> gets all over the table. Uh, place the soap solution Hello. in a- Hi, Hello? sorry to interrupt. This okay. is Raymond. I apologize yes. a few names ago. Uh, yeah. We were talking about the soap bubble. Yes. Uh, how do you- handle the black color over the over the bubble uh the it like the the you know the color that kind of like it looks like it drips over the soap bubble the black color how do you get rid of that color on top oh uh, well, as i mentioned earlier when it turns white and then black is right before it breaks so that's just going to be something that happens over time the little trick that I picked up on YouTube was uh, you can keep your soap bubble going longer, you know, if you like take a straw or an eyedropper, put it in the soap solution and drop a couple of drops on top of the bubble. 
and that'll replenish okay the soap solution okay or put some food coloring on it and that'll do some other interesting effects too but when it turns white and then black it, that then it's ready to break the other little trick is <laughs> when you're behind the camera ah. and you just blow on on the bubble and that causes the soap solution to circulate and replenishes the supply at the top of the bubble. Okay. Okay, let's continue with, with the setup, the basic setup. Uh, Thank you. Uh, what I would recommend is like a black cup, like this coffee cup. Okay. And what I do is I put the soap solution a little bit, you know, like a half an inch or so in the bottom. And then I just blow into the soap solution and the cup fills up with bubbles. And then I blow, pull it out and blow one big one that sits on top of the cup and the other bubbles. So there's a little bit of soap solution in the bottom of the cup. I blow the bubbles to fill up the cup. And then I blow one big bubble that tops off the whole thing. So now I've got a bubble that's sitting on top of this cup that looks like this. Okay. Now, the trickiest part is the lighting. And it's best if you have a black, black something, a black cloth or a black piece of paper right behind the bubble. If it's white, it, it's going to, the colors are going to fade into the, to the white. So put like a black piece of, of cloth or, or paper or something, you know, behind on the wall, behind, directly behind the cup. Doesn't have to be large, just so when you look at it, the camera, you're looking through the bubble and, and you see black behind it and it'll make the colors really stand out nicely. Dennis, okay. as, as such, your light source then is off to the side? Uh, yeah, well, we'll yeah, let me get to that in a sec, okay? So you blow the bubbles. Uh, th that is the trickiest part is finding the best place for the light. So here's my cup with the bubble on it. I'm photographing directly into it, let's say, and, and your light source is coming basically from up top. If it's a bubble, the light source, the window or whatever is up here shining down on the bubble. And then you have to move around with your camera to find the best position for the most color. And then when you look directly behind, you're looking at that black piece of paper or cloth to make the, the colors stand out. Let me, let me give you a, a picture setup. Here's what, now I didn't, I didn't use a window, I used a, a soft box. So here's my camera and it is on a tripod for this particular situation because I couldn't hold it and take a picture at the same time. And here's my table with the cup on and pretend there's a bubble on top of that, that uh, the cup. Here's the black cloth. So when I'm looking through the camera, at, through the bubble or at the bubble, there's a black cloth behind it. My light is coming from this soft box above the bubble. Now, let me, as I implied earlier, bubbles are difficult to do because of the lighting and their round shape. So I'm going to recommend that you start with films. They're easier because the lighting is a little tricky. But if you play around like with the window, whatever you're using and you know, try different angles, you can probably find one that'll work. But films are easier. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Uh, so the setup for the soap bubbles, uh, in this case, I use the tripod, macro lens. I, oh, this is my setup. Okay, it's a little more sophisticated because I use the uh, softbox, but I use a studio flash in the softbox. And as you can see, it was positioned above. I set the shutter speed at one two hundredth of a second because that's the sync speed for the flash. And if you don't use flash, just close your ears for a minute. Okay, don't worry about this. I set the aperture to f32 for maximum uh, depth of field. I had the ISO at 400. I shoot raw and I use manual focus, either moving it back and forth or moving the focus ring. Okay, so that's my setup. As I said, there's an easier way. You can use soap films instead of bubbles, and there's just a, a, a little bit of a variation in the technique that makes this easier. What you're going to do is you're going to put 
the soap solution in a dish like this one. Take your cup, nothing in it, no coffee, no soap. Turn it upside down. Put it in the soap solution. When you bring it back out, guess what? There's going to be a soap solution, a film across the front of your cup. So all you do now is set the cup down on its side and turn it around toward the light and away from the light until you get the best position for the colors of the soap bubbles. Okay, it's not a bubble. It'll be a flat film right across the front of the cup. Dennis, excuse yes. me, it seems like it's pretty important. Can you uh, show us, because we can't see what you're doing there. Okay, we're looking at the uh, PowerPoint. Can you- uh, Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I assumed you could see my demonstration too. No, we, we can't see that. So can you do that again and just show us? Because that sounded pretty important. Okay, okay. Let me, let me stop the uh, share for just a second and show you that. Okay, so now you can see me. Yes. Yeah, so here's, here's my cup. Here's the, the dish that I would use. And this is for a film. So I put a little soap solution in the bottom of the dish. Cup empty. Turn the cup upside down. Put the cup in the soap solution. And when you lift it back up, voila, you're going to have a soap film across the front of the cup. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is just set your cup down on its side as such. And then let's say my light's off to the side here. Then I just move the cup. I spin the cup around a little bit until I see the colors. And I'll show you the setup in a diagram uh, here. It's a 45 degree angle is going to maximize the colors. And I'll show you what that looks like. But you simply move the cup around until you can see the colors. Okay, let's go back to the share. <laughs> Okay, so here's, so it's basically a similar setup. I won't go through all that again, but now you've got something that looks like this. This is my soft box, but it could be your window. Okay, so here's the window, maybe a piece of white uh, uh, a sheet, bed sheet or something over to diffuse the light. Here's my cup and you can see the soap film across the, the front of the cup and my camera. And here's what I meant by the 45 degree angle. This is straight away toward the cup, but the light's coming from the soft box, boom, boom. And that's a 45 degree angle from the light source to the, to the soap film to the camera is a 45 degree. But it's real simple. All you do, it's you're setting your, your uh, cup down and then you just move the, rotate the cup a little bit until you see the maximum amount of color. And, and it's easy, it's simple. And it, it really works well. So with my setup, again, I did use a tripod, macro lens, softbox, same as before, and same settings as before for my setup there, the film as compared to the bubble. The only thing that's different is the arrangement of the, the light for the bubble. And it was a pain. It was difficult to put that softbox up above and try to get my head in there with the camera. Uh, that, this is easy. You just have your window here or the softbox. 45 degree angle, rotate the cup till you maximize the colors and shoot away, shoot away. So uh, what you get again are, are things like this. See, here's the edge of the cup. And I don't see any problem including the cup in it. You get that, that curved edge. And I didn't do anything special. This stuff just happens. <laughs> you know, things like this. I, it looks like a jellyfish to me. I just waited and here come this little, this little plume started up here and it went, you know, either that or it's an atom bomb explosion, you know, use your imagination, but you, you know, and you do it again, you, you get tired of one or it breaks, you put in another one, you get a whole different set of colors. Then you take your, your little straw, dip it, okay, into the, uh, uh, into the dish and boom, put a little drop at the top of, of the cup and whoo, that comes down through, replenishes the supply, and then adds all this turbulence uh, you know, to, to the film and gives you all these different patterns. Just incredible. Here's uh, that's one of my favorites. I think it looks like little sperm swimming around. Uh -huh. uh, this one here, 
This is where I added red food coloring. So I had a nice pattern and then I just used, you know, used the straw, had a little dipped it into the uh, red food coloring and just touched the top of the cup. And that drop went down through the soap film and created, you know, the stream, you know, flowing through the, the film. Just, just incredible pattern, stuff like this. I mean, and remember that the, the, the collar depends on the thickness of the film. So if somebody you know, really knows this stuff and, and you can tell me, I, I'm, I'd be eager to hear an explanation, but how can the thickness of the soap film vary so vary that you know so and and create such an intricate pattern yeah I, I can't envision that but that's the basic science behind it is the color depends on the thickness of the film in that location hmm. and of course adding other substances like motor oil or vegetable oil or color food coloring just uh, complicates the situation for the soap bubble but makes it more interesting you know viewing for us now, I took a couple other suggestions and I was trying a couple other things. Um, and let me stop the share again. The one uh, guy on, one person on YouTube that I followed said, oh, use a ring instead of a, before I found the cup idea. And I bought these at uh, Michael's. It's just, uh, you can buy wood and I'm not sure what they're, they're used for crafts. Okay, just a, a wooden ring you can get. Uh, or sometimes I, I'll go overboard a little bit and I was getting a little fancy. Well, this guy had such a, an, an interesting idea. I thought, yeah, I got to try that. So this is a, what, five inch wooden embroidery ring. See a little gizmo you people who embroider would know. Uh, just a wooden embroidery ring. And this is a uh, paracord, they call it. You can get it at Michael's, okay? And he wrapped the paracord, or I, and I did, all around the wooden ring. A little laborious and time consuming, but you wrap it all around. Then the idea is you dip the whole thing in the soap solution. And then when you come up, it, it, this is all, the cord's all wet with the soap solution and it keeps replenishing you know, the supply of soap and your bubble's gonna last longer. Well, I thought it was pretty, but it was a waste of time and money. It, it didn't do much more than the, the cup. The cup works really well. Just stick with the cup unless you want to get fancy. But what it did do, it allowed me to come up with a couple of uh, neat pictures with that included, like uh, like this one. What did you do with my pet? Okay, like that Wendy. And, uh, Wendy, are you going to quiet somebody's pet here? There we go. Let me. Uh... Um, yeah. So. I, I thought the embroidered ring looked nice and gave a nice frame to the beautiful colors in the soap film. And then you can imagine these are ghostly figures on the Martian surface or something. Yeah, no, just, just use your imagination for that. But wild, wild, wild. But I thought that was neat. And I love the colors of the, uh, the paracord. And then another one like that, a little closer up, only showing part of it, okay. With the films, especially, I mean, the films that as big as the, the, the coffee cup. So you don't need close up macro equipment. You know, you can, you, in fact, you, if you it got more than the cup, when, when you get the picture and post, just crop it in a little bit, you know, to whatever you want. Uh, easy enough, easy enough. Okay, uh, let me pause there. And the next part is, is going to be some, a few ideas for, creative post-production. But before I get into that, do uh, you have any questions? That, that is the basic process about how I created the images that you've seen. And all this is done with just three tablespoons of solution, right? Yes, can be. I mean, you can double it if you want. You know, it's like any recipe. If you want to make more, if you want to make a really big bubble, uh, no, or, or if you're going to continue using it day after day for different projects. But that, that uh, formula I gave you can get you started, and that's a good, you know, for one, for a session. Yeah. Dennis, uh, this is Joe. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are the, uh, what are, from your experiences, where would the downfalls be? Where, where would the failure points be typically on, on doing the, it? With films, the only well, the number one tough part is 
the solution? Is it going to give you something that's going to last? So you have to, with the soap water solution, you have to add something like glycerin or sugar. If you don't, they just won't last. Okay, that's the one minor point that it's easy to get over. The okay. other one is the lighting. Okay, if you just set it up on your table in the middle of the room, you might not see the colors. You want to get it close to some light source like a window or a softbox. Don't use a flash uh, 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 unless you have a softbox. Or you get the LEDs that was mentioned earlier, you could use that. 45 degree angle works well, but you don't have to measure. You just spin the cup around until you see the colors. And it's as simple as that. I mean, it's not, not complicated. There really aren't any serious stumbling blocks. You too can get colors that look like this. And, and the reason, the nice thing about the black coffee cup is, see, it's black on the inside. So those colors are maximized because you have black behind the soap film. Okay? So you don't have to worry about putting up a sheet or, I mean, a black paper or a black cloth or anything. You're using the, the black coffee cup. Okay, any other questions? Dennis. Yes, did Jerry. You, did you ever think about trying to put little pellets of um, dry ice? Ooh, dry ice. I was just working with a friend the other day. We were working with dry ice, and that's pretty neat. And that might work pretty nice with this. What do you, what do you think it would happen with the soap solution? Well, the, so, the, the stuff will start to bubble. And if the dry ice isn't, the pellet isn't contained in a specific area, it just starts to go bananas and it travels around in circles. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, that won't work for the films, but if you go back up here to the bubbles the cups. and you yep. have something like this and mm -hmm. then you put some dry ice in, yeah, yeah, that, that would make it do something interesting, I would think. And I think in this one, let's see the red, uh, uh, I added a little red food coloring to this and maybe some uh, oil yeah, to get, give a little variation on that one. Okay, yeah, thanks, Terry. That, that's a good idea. Uh, anybody else? Or if you've heard of any other uh, uh, innovative uh, ideas for photographing soap bubbles or solutions? If you're shooting JPEGs, I would think you would want to change your white balance between photos that you take. But if you're shooting raw, you can change your white balance in post-processing. Mm, is the white balance, well, the colors you get in the soap bubbles uh, could be anything. So there's no way to set a standard color for them. So I don't think you really need to worry about it. Uh, whatever colors you get, you get. Uh, uh, with the exception, of course, if you weren't happy with the, the, the colors, the tint maybe, maybe uh, from the light source, then you might want to adjust the white balance you know, if you're shooting JPEG. Yeah. Okay, let's look at a few creative things you can do in post. Uh, assuming you have uh, Lightroom Photoshop, uh, this I took into Photoshop and there's a filter called oil paint. So if you look at the small one on the right here, that's the, the uh, original image. And it's, you look at the one on the left, the bigger one, and it has more of a dreamy painterly look to it. Uh, whether you like that or not, that's personal preference, but it's something you could do. Okay, use one of the filters in Photoshop. Uh, another thing you can do is in Photoshop, you could use the liquify. I don't know if you've ever done this. It's simple to use and you watch a YouTube video to explain how to do it. But you, this is the original on the right. You can get in with the liquify filter and you can make these features like larger or smaller. You can exaggerate them really easily. You just click on them and it boom, 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 bulges them up and it just throws them out of proportion. Just, just This is stuff just for fun. Yeah, you know, why? I, when when you want to spend a couple of hours and you just want to get lost in you know your own thoughts and you just want to experiment and have fun, try this stuff. Right? It's not it's not serious work except you get some really cool stuff from it. Sometimes, here's another one. I don't know if you've ever seen these in in Photoshop. You can do polar coordinates, so it'll take a regular picture 
and wrap it around in, in a 360 degrees. So this is the film. See, here's on the right, here's the, the edge of the cup. And then I took it into um, uh, Photoshop and applied polar coordinates and it turned it around and put it in a 360 wrap and almost makes it look like, a, I thought it looked like a phonograph record, you know, but who knows, could, could look like lots of different things, but it, it's just something different to do. This one, I thought it's also polar coordinates. I thought it made it look like uh, an eyeball after a really rough night, <laughs> <laughs> a really rough night. That's a psychedelically rough night. Um, okay. Uh, the next and the final part are other examples in nature of thin film interference. Okay, you can photograph or not, but other examples uh, in nature and, and man-made. So before we get into that, anybody have any other thoughts on post-processing? Uh, you can alter the colors any way you want to just to make them wild. Uh, but any questions or thoughts? Yes, Topaz then. Studio 2 would be good for this too. Uh, let's see. Who's that? Alton? Right. Okay. What was that again? Topaz Studio 2 does a lot of weird things. And uh, one of the choices, for example, is Monet. It'll make, it'll make this look like a Monet painting. And I think that would be kind of cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. I might have to buy a uh, Topaz Suite. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Anything else? Anybody? Dennis, Harry. on this, on the one you have up right now, what caused the black, uh, like a wing? Was that the cup that caused that? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, actually it's, see on the, on the original, see this black area up at the top? Okay. That's what that is. But it just distorts it in a weird way. So it's, it's just oh, an abstraction okay. of it. Yeah, okay. it's a polar coordinates. And you may have seen this with a landscape shot. Um, people do this and then it looks like it's spherical or it's circular but it, it makes it look like an island. It like takes it and whoop, wraps it around. But anyway, just something weird to do with it. Okay, any other questions or comments on, on that part? Okay, cool. Let's look at some uh, real life examples uh, other than soap. And we're all familiar with this one, the oil slick. And these are, these are good to photograph too. And, and you know, when you see an oil slick on the road, what do you do? You stand back and you move your head around, right? Until you can see the collars. That's exactly what you do when you, you photograph the soap films. You just move your head around or, or the cup around until you get the right angle to see the collars, right? Uh, here's some other examples in nature. And uh, Elaine and I have been doing a, a lot of this kind of stuff with our macro shots of insects. Uh, I mean, I have been blown away with the small creatures that I would either bypass entirely or I would squish with my shoe and keep walking. You know, I don't kill anything anymore <laughs> because I know if you look up close, it's going to be amazing. They're beautiful. I mean, the collars and the patterns. Anyway, yeah, look at, see the wings. Okay, that's thin film interference being created by, on the wings of the, the flower fly. You can get it with the house fly there too. Uh, and the peacock moth get all kinds of, of uh, uh, colors through thin film interference. Uh, the peacock feathers, okay. Ruby throated hummingbirds, you know? When you look at them at the feeder, sometimes you, you don't see the red. And they move or you move and all of a sudden, oh, look at that beautiful red throat. Well, that's because of the angle at which the light is hitting it and the red is caused by a thin film interference okay, in the hummingbird. Other examples, seashells. You may have picked up uh, one like this and saw the iridescent colors. CDs and DVDs, I, you know, I know they're going out, but in any case, you can still find some laying around my house. Uh, you know, angle them. Okay, or some people like the decorations, they'll put them on strings and put them in the backyard just to keep the, the birds or the crows away. Okay, and then you see all those pretty collars as they move around and they change. Or in, in certain minerals, all examples of thin film interference. Now, here's one that's wild. Uh, this was at a car show, I think in Japan. Uh, yeah, you can tell by the, the, the guy there, uh, or in Asia somewhere. But they've actually figured out how to... to finish a car 
to put a film on that, that gives you the same effect. And then, you know, depending on how you look at it, it, it has different colors. Crazy, crazy. Uh, credit cards. You've seen this security measure on the credit cards? Okay, like this, I think this is Citibank. Um, depending on how you move, you know, the card, it changes the colors. Uh, if you're a bio type person, you've ever taken, or you work with glass, uh, you've ever sandwiched two pieces of glass together like slides or, or just flat glass, you see this pattern show up sometimes. These colors, they're circular. Well, they're called Newton's rings. And you're getting the same effect, this thin film interference, but now instead of using a soap film, it comes from the air that is trapped between these two glass plates. Okay, Re Light reflects off the first surface of the air film and the second surface of the air film and gives you an interference pattern. And, and the thickness of that air, that little air layer varies and gives you different colors. That's the whole idea. Same effect, same. I had a lot of fun with this one. I, we, when we were in Europe on a cruise a while back and we still had some dollar or some money left over. This is a, a 20 euro bill. Now, granted, it's only a small part of, of the bill. And I photographed this myself. Those three pictures are the exact same part of the bill. But I moved the light a little bit to change the effect, the interference effect. See, over here on the right, you can't see that face at all. Here I can see it on the left, but it's a different color. So the pattern changes entirely. And this is woven into the fibers of the bill as a counterfeit security measure. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. And I guess we'll end on that incredible note. So I have a few basic resources here that you can refer to. And as I said, I'll, I'll have this available for you to download tomorrow. Uh, but one of the easiest things to do is just get on YouTube if you want to you know, learn a little bit more and put in thin film interference or soap bubbles, soap films, whatever, and you'll come up with a plethora of, uh, of options. One, one of the uh, interesting side notes, you know, I used to teach physics, I mentioned, and uh, there was a, a, a guy by the name of Professor Sumner. Uh, when I was teaching back in the 70s, this guy was, he was old then, and he did all these uh, uh, demonstrations that were on film at that time, and they'd been transferred to YouTube videos. So when I started researching, you know, for uh, soap films, a bunch of his videos came up and it brought back memories from my, the 70s when I was teaching high school physics. <laughs> Okay, guys, that's it. That's it. This doesn't have to be complicated. You can keep it simple. As I say, I recommend using the cup. Uh, let me stop share here so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see me waving my hands. Uh, I recommend using the coffee cup. That's the simplest way. You know, use a film rather than a bubble. But nonetheless, just play around, have fun, try different things, see what you can come up with. Questions or comments? Finish. On, on the... the photo that you did with the money from Europe. Yes. Are those not holograms? They are holograms, yes. Okay. And yeah, they work that, on the basis of thin film interference. Uh, from what I understand, the holograms, the reason they use that in Europe is because to, to make a hologram like that, it takes very, very expensive equipment. That's the idea. And Stop those counterfeiters. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think the United States, I understand, is starting to introduce some of that into uh, some of our bills, uh, yes. but but not like, you know, Europe has with the euro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, was, we, that was a real fun experiment. We then, have little strips in the in the bills and there's kids down in South America that are taught to take a needle and actually go in and pull that strip out and stick it into another bill. Oh my goodness! My yes. Goodness. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that is very interesting. And I, uh, some of the macro work that I've done is very close up, like five times life size. And I have photographed uh, some U.S. currency at like uh, five times life size, and it, it is interesting to see those little uh, metallic type fibers woven in through through the uh, material of the bill. Joe, you had a question? 
you know, just a comment. I, I thought uh, before we started this tonight, this was going to be super complicated and I was going to have to get all this <laughs> stuff. And uh, I can see that it's really easy, isn't it? It's uh, fun. It's a, yeah. And I forgot most of the complicated stuff I ever knew when I was teaching physics. So now I just have fun with it. Yeah, that, that was a great presentation. I really enjoyed that. That was well, really thanks. Nice. And I'm going to everybody. Go I'm going to ask everybody to unmute themselves, and uh, if you do, uh, make a comment about uh, Dennis. Put something in chat if you would, because he I know he likes to have feedback. So how we could improve or whatever. And, uh, I'll tell you. Why don't we just open it up and let's ignore chat because then you'll have to monitor that. But if you have a question or a comment, just go ahead and, and uh, let me know. Thank you, Dennis. Very interesting. You're welcome. Yeah, Dennis, between, you. the, between the bubbles and uh, your insect photography, you you really have introduced us to a, a whole <laughs> new realm of of uh, existence. Yeah, this is uh, really exciting. It it yeah. has I, it's caught on fire with me. It has become a passion <laughs> that I really really enjoy. Well, it. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. I have a question. Yes. Where did you find that nice black coffee cup with the black interior? Isn't that nice? Yeah, and I have a di well, the whole set of dishware. Uh huh. Nice, you know, uh, that was Bed Bath and Beyond. Okay. A bunch of years ago. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, okay. Cam? I've enjoyed your your macro work too. You've done some nice. Stuff. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, this was great. I I can see uh, a lot of us are going to be practicing on the next really hot day. <laughs> Or well, in the winter time, this will yeah. be great. Yes, absolutely. I just started thinking the other day, what happens when it gets cold and I won't have any bugs to, to well, that's how this got started. This was last winter, <laughs> you know, and, and my macro thing actually got started during COVID. Um, you know, I bought that, you know, specialty uh, Canon lens, the MPE 65 millimeter, one to five X during COVID just to entertain myself. So. I see snowflakes coming, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to see snowflakes. I still like the beach. Oh, and, and well, if you get on Facebook, there are lots of different groups devoted to macros. So if you're into that, you know, you can go in and just lurk at those. But I was down at the beach and I saw a guy who, who took two grains of sand, two grains of sand. One was like a polished gem. He put one on top of the other one somehow and balanced them and then took a, a, a super macro shot where they filled up the whole frame of two grains of sand. That's that pretty cool. Look, that's very, very nice. Okay, I'll stop talking. Any, any other questions or comments, guys? It's nice to see the physics behind it, Dennis. Yeah. It gets a lot more complicated. If, if you want, get online and, and uh, listen to one of those lectures. And I just gave you a very brief overview because I didn't want to, well, I don't know what happened to my brain. I get baffled. That, by that, that's hi stuff. highly appreciated. Yeah, I wish I had taken <laughs> physics from you in college rather than what's his name? No, I, I, yeah, <laughs> Pre Professor Sumner. Yeah, I tried to make it fun. Right? And I, I'm still trying to make it fun. It, as as uh, who was that? Rick Salmon said it. If you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> you were and are a great teacher. Thanks, Diane. I love you too. Uh, <laughs> And you're very passionate about it, Dennis. I just yeah, I love to see your enthusiasm. Infectious. It it uh, really spills over. When, when I when I get psyched, and uh, even though people don't like my spider, some people don't like my spider pictures. <laughs> and amazing. You're, supposed to, you're supposed to stomp on those spiders. Oh, I I, I hesitated to call Terminex. I think I'm going to end my service now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to grow them. Well, guys. Have you seen the jumping spider pictures? And I, I didn't even know jumping spiders existed. And I, I'm, I'm asking these guys online, how do you get all these great pictures of these jumping spiders? Oh, oh, I pull Betsy out of the terrarium and she poses for me. Yeah. You, you haven't bought yours pets. yet? What's that? You haven't bought your jumping spiders yet? Not yet. <laughs> Maybe another winter project, a terrarium with jumping spiders. <laughs> Well, it's been fun, guys. Uh, unless yeah. you have anything pressing, we'll we'll call it a night. Any any last comments? No, uh, that was really great. Thank, so, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank okay, you. so <laughs> yeah, thanks. Dennis, Dennis, Terry. Se September. Hang on a second. Yeah, September. I'm already planning my my next presentation for this fall for for bug pictures. 
we'll September do some September 17th and 18th is the air show in Lancaster. Oh, okay. September 17th and 18th, 17th air and 18th. show in Lancaster. Yes. It's actually at uh, off of 501 in, in Linnitz area, but they call it the Lancaster Airport. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Good place Thanks. for shots. Anything else, guys? No. Thanks again. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Stop the recording.